This is the second video of the chest x-ray case series. Each case will start with some clinical information before you get shown the x-rays. After you get the x-rays, pause the video, take your time to evaluate. After that, continue the video and you will get an explanation of the case. Remember that the clinical information is important to know what to look for and without proper clinical signs, you can't diagnose anything really, just based on an x-ray. So for our first case, we have a 70 year old male. He has a known diagnosis of COPD with emphysema and he has suffered from pneumonia many times before. Today he presents with dyspnea that has gotten gradually worse. These x-rays were taken, pause the video and take some time to evaluate. The first thing I see is that the PA view x-ray is not a very good one. We can't see the bottom part of the lungs and therefore we can't evaluate the sinuses properly. But what we can evaluate is the posterior anterior diameter, which is abnormally large. As well as that we can see that the diaphragm is quite straight. Both of these changes tells us that we have lung hyperinflation. If we take a look at the heart, we can see that the heart has a very strange shape. It looks abnormally small and it has kind of like this strange form. The form that you can see here is what we call a droplet heart. This is a finding that can be seen in some patients with emphysema. Here you can see how it compares to how a heart normally looks like on an x-ray. In our case, which is on the picture to the left, we can see the droplet form of the heart, while in the right picture, the heart has a normal size and form. In addition, we can see numerous emphysema bullae scattered around both lungs. I marked some of them here. Emphysema bullae are permanent enlarged air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioli. They are thin walled with less than one millimeter thick walls. Emphysema is best evaluated on a CT scan with only some cases showing signs on a conventional X-ray like the one we have here. All in all, these findings give a conclusion of COPD with emphysema. This patient was known with the disease already, so there's nothing new there. There were no signs of COPD exaggerations on the x-rays. The signs we would look for are consolidations, pneumothorax, tumors, and heart failure. The next case is about a 34-year-old woman. She arrives at the emergency room with complaints of chest pain, which worsens when she breathes. At home, she has measured a temperature of 38.9 degrees Celsius, taken in the armpit. On examination, we can hear crepitations in the left lung while auscultating. A PA view and a lateral view x-ray were taken. Pause and take some time to evaluate. First, we can mention that the right lung is without any visible pathology. The left lung, however, has a few things going on. The whole area marked here in the inferior part of the left lung is affected by consolidation. In addition, we have something I have marked here. This is a capsulated structure in which we can see an air liquid window. Air is a darker area which you can see in the top half of the structure, while liquid is the light part which is in the bottom part of the structure. The same structure can be seen on the lateral image. From this, we can conclude that it is located in the far posterior part of the inferior part of the lung. Some of you are probably thinking, wait a second, it looks like the structure is much higher up in the lateral picture compared to the PA picture. And yeah, it does look like that, but remember that the diaphragma isn't necessarily directly under the structure as it can look like on the PA view. This is one of the good reasons why we need two projections. On the lateral projection, we can see the location of the diaphragma relative to the structure. In addition, the angles are not always perfect. And in these images, there is some angle to how the PA view looks like compared to the lateral image. So all in all, these findings give us the conclusion of a left lobular pneumonia, specifically in the inferior lobe of the left lung. In addition, it has led to the formation of an abscess, which is the structure we talked about. 
And by the way, if you were wondering about what this thing right here is, it looks like an ECG electrode that has not been taken off yet. In our third case, we have an 81-year-old male. This patient arrived at the ER due to some episodes of chest pain. The pain started in conjugation with eating meals. Soon after the onset of pain, he felt nauseous and he started vomiting. From before, he has a known diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, heart insufficiency, type 2 diabetes, and hypertension. Some x-rays were taken. Pause and take some time to evaluate. For the inexperienced x-ray evaluator, it is difficult to see if there is anything wrong here, but there is something we can see. Quite hidden on the PA image, we have a process located at the bottom middle part of the heart shadow. On the lateral view image, we can see the same process located just behind the heart. The location of this structure and how it looks like is typical for a condition called hiatus hernia. Based on the symptoms and the process's location and how it looks like, it makes it a very plausible diagnosis. If you remember, if you remember from the case from the video before this one, it was a case of hiatus hernia as well, but it looked quite different. Here I added the PA view of the last case to the right, while this case is on the left. Let's compare them. Both are cases of hiatus hernia, but they don't look the same. In the older case, we can clearly see the air liquid window inside the structure, with the air pocket being colored blue, and the liquid pocket is colored green. In the case we have now, however, there is no such air liquid differentiation. This is completely normal, and both cases are examples of hiatus hernias. It is easier to conclude when we have the air-liquid differentiation, but it is what it is. Our next patient is a 43-year-old, normally healthy male. He arrives at the emergency room with a general feeling of illness, a slight fever of 38.2 degrees Celsius, and a history of cold sweating. In this case, we have only a PA view x-ray, which was taken as the part of our infection focus hunt. Pause and take some time to evaluate. This is actually a somewhat boring case, but it has to be a few of them as well, because in this case, there is no visible pathology. But there is a reason why I included this case. In this case, I wanted to test you about this thing marked here with a red arrow. Some of you might have thought that this is a case of pneumoperitoneum, which means that there is free air in the abdominal cavity. However, this is not the case. Here we can compare it to an actual case of pneumoperitoneum. Notice how the case of pneumoperitoneum has a very thin capsule, which is actually the diaphragm. Compared to this case, which is the, both the diaphragm, but with also some connective tissue and the stomach itself. This is because the air-filled space in our case is simply just a gastric bubble, which is some air inside the stomach. This is a completely normal phenomenon. Another thing is that in a case of a real pneumoperitoneum, the air will always be on the right side of the abdominal cavity. This is because the abdominal cavity goes a bit higher up on the right side as a result of the location of the liver. You can, of course, have air inside the abdominal cavity on the left side as well, but it will always be present at the right side at the same time. Our last case is about an 82-year-old woman. She arrives with complaints of dyspnea that has gotten progressively worse over the last few days. From before, we know that she has a known diagnosis of heart insufficiency with an ejection factor of just 20. On the first examinations, we find that she has a fever of 38.5 degrees Celsius. A PA view and a lateral view image were taken. Pause and take some time to evaluate. First, we can see that the trachea is deviated to the right. In addition, the trachea seems to have a smaller diameter in the superior part compared to the inferior part. 
Next, we can see that the heart is quite huge, really big. Normally, the heart should be equal to under 50% of the diameter of the thorax. That's when viewing a PA view image. In our case, the heart is about 80% of the thorax diameter, so it is massively increased in size compared to how it normally should be. The next change we can see is that the lungs are hyperinflated. We know that to be the case because we can see the diaphragma is straightened out and the posterior anterior diameter is abnormally large. This means that we have lung hyperinflation. We can also see a tiny bit of liquid in the sinus or sinuses. It is hard to evaluate on the PA view for sure, as the diaphragm is straightened out and the heart makes it hard to evaluate the left sinus. But it does look like there is liquid present bilaterally. Another thing we can see is that the lungs have an increased amount of vascular signs in both lungs, best seen on the PA view. Let's quickly compare to a normal x-ray, which is shown here on the right. In the normal case, you can see how the vessels are prominent in the central part of the thorax, but the more you go towards the periphery, they get less and less visible. In our abnormal case, however, we can easily see that the blood vessels are strongly visible in the whole lungs. All in all, these changes means that we have a case of severe heart failure that has led to cardiomegaly and pulmonary hypertension. The deviated trachea in the beginning of this case is a result of being pushed to the side by the enlarged heart. The whole heart is enlarged and we can see signs of pulmonary hypertension. Usually this is a result of long-standing, typically years, of hypertension. Hypertension causes left heart failure, which in turn causes pulmonary hypertension, which again in turn leads to right heart failure. Thank you for watching. I hope it has been educational. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers.